Hello, it's Scott Manley here, flying the B9 Strugatsky. I'm going to fly it in a way that you've probably not seen before. Now, this is not a stock Strugatsky. First of all, we're flying with Ferrum Aerospace. There's some subtle changes to the control surfaces. Uh, and I've rebalanced the aircraft just a little because see all those control surfaces that are on the aircraft to steer it? I want to be able to fly without using any of those at all. So I've disabled ASAS. I have, and I, if you look in the bottom left, I am not going to touch any controls there from now on. You can see my pitch, yaw, and roll indicators, and those will remain rock solid and static. Instead, I'm going to try flying this aircraft using this uh, mod, the Davon uh, Throttle Control mod, which basically lets me. Um, adjust the throttle for these engines individually and my plan is that group one is going to be the left side and group two is going to be the right side and they're not working why are they not working i gotta load the profile there we go engines firing so we're kind of pitching down already so hopefully I'm, what i'm going to do is run up to a hundred percent thrust and hope that i pull out of this dive so I've designed this aircraft, I've modified this aircraft to be sure so that it is a very stable in the forward axis under glide. The idea is as it goes faster the nose will pitch up and as it goes slower the nose will pitch down. So this is a self-correcting situation. I should be able to adjust the pitch just by throttling the thrust on those engines. And you know, to a certain extent, those engines are also mounted below the center of mass, so there is a torque on it, and I'm going up again too much. This is going to be hard. I want to kind of get it into a more or less stable flight. Uh, this is actually a well-known kind of uh, flight behavior where you have an oscillation, where you, it's like a roller coaster, where you go up and down as you gain and lose speed. And uh, it... It is something that you have to be concerned about, <laughs> but right now I am merely trying to control this aircraft. We've got some real vertical speed here. Uh, okay, I'm down at about 30... I'm down at around 40% thrust. The other thing I'm trying to do is I'm picking up a bit of a roll because I can't quite match my left and right. Now, the reason why I have left and right uh, engines assigned to different thr throttle groups is so I can put more throttle on one side and that will tend to yaw and then by extension it will tend to roll my aircraft in that direction. So I am able to control this aircraft uh, by adjusting the absolute throttle for pitch and by adjusting the differential throttle for roll. And you see that I'm more or less getting it flat. I'm just trying to get the thing rolling again so that we can get some control over this. Uh, this is obviously, this aircraft is fully equipped for flying. I mean, we haven't actually disabled these flaps or anything, but hypothetically, you could take many of these flaps off of there, all these ailerons and everything. I call them flaps, as in they're, they're really ailerons, and, um, which are very different kind of things. I should be able to take those off and this whole thing should fly. Or, hypothetically, say you had a failure in your aircraft which caused all the control surfaces to stop working. Um, now, real aircraft, they have multiple backups of these. Your typical aircraft will have three or even four hydraulic systems for driving the various flaps and everything. And in fact, modern aircraft also have like adaptive systems as well that they'll detect that things aren't working and they'll spread the workload around because they're all fly-by-wire. Okay, I'm going to try turning to the right a little now. So I'm deliberately doing this because I kind of want to turn back towards the space center. You know, actually, NASA do, did a bit of research on this. There's a thing out, of, there's a publication I read recently out of Dryden. It's like a, a history of uh, self healing control systems. And they talk about um, the famous Israeli F 15 where the aircraft lost a wing and the pilot was still able to fly it back. And that was kind of, you know, people got really interested, essentially, because the pilot was, you know, pilots are able to adapt to these conditions given enough time. Humans are very good at learning things. Um, and so, you know, he was able to land his aircraft. Um, sadly, I mean, when, you know, when aircraft lose wings, usually they crash. Um, and when aircraft lose all their control, they tend to crash. 
and there's quite a few cases um, you know I have talked about aircraft they have three or four hydraulic systems there have been cases where aircraft have lost all their hydraulic systems and you know they are totally uncontrollable uh, unless you can use the engines and that isn't a guarantee of anything because the engines provide very very limited control um, there was one well-known case I think is there's uh, an Airbus like that uh, was a cargo plane that was flying out of Baghdad and it hit by a an air launch or uh, a shoulder launch surface to air missile and then the damage basically wrecked well it, it did enough damage that all the hydraulic systems drained so you see I'm turning this very carefully it's just so gentle this whole thing uh, <laughs> oh well yes yeah, so they th that crew they were able to fly the aircraft using the engine power and they steered it in and managed to land. I think it still like went off the runway or something but at the same time they still were able to safely land that aircraft and you know that was a miracle. The other the other case uh, where it didn't quite land and it was it's simultaneously a tragedy and a miracle that the the pilots did as great job as they did was a it was a DC-10 and it was a United flight and what happened was there's three engines in a DC-10 there's a one underneath the tail and two one on each wing and the one underneath the tail the turbine basically exploded the turbine disc fractured and shrapnel basically chopped all the hydraulic lines and so the aircraft was left flying with a with a with some like 200 and 80 passengers on it and you know this crew had you know they realized they had no control and they were in serious trouble they uh, were very lucky well you know they were extremely unlucky but uh it's hard to say they were lucky but they there was one other pilot on the flight apparently who was an instructor that had had actually been curious about flying the DC-10 using just engine power so there were four crew in the cockpit and they managed to line the aircraft up for the runway but they couldn't get the speed down and it did you know it was it ran into the runway and cartwheeled and it was a real you know mess real terrible tragedy but the crew on that were you know some of the finest airmen uh, the finest pilots in history I think you know they they went and they they really did save hundreds of lives, despite the fact that you know, hundred another hundred died. You know, it's 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 sorry, I'm just like oh, tearing up a little of this. Uh, you should really go and check it out. It is uh, an amazing, an amazing story and tragedy and miracle at the same time. If you in in a way of looking at it. Okay, so I'm gonna try and land this thing. I'm you know I don't know if I can do this. I'm just going for the grass. I'm not going for the runway main problem is that I'm really high up and I need to get my altitude way down here so I'm also pointing the wrong direction as well I wonder if uh, yeah I was, I was just thinking maybe I can oscillate the aircraft from left to right that would be really really uh, not good no um, just very carefully I'm going up again I want to be losing altitude I think I'm gonna to have to like cut these things down to idle to be able to fly this thing uh, great not good come on now I've, I've actually heard that there are you know aircraft control systems where the engineers are have tested the possibility of using you know differential thrust as part of the backups I mean, the idea being that if you've got a fly-by-wire aircraft and you have minor damage or some sort of damage, then it should do as much as it can to keep your thing flying. And so I, I've, I remember it was some show, and it was actually Bruce Dickinson was presenting it. He was talking about future uh, airline technology, and they had this simulated simulator where they turned off all the flaps and he was still able to fly the simulator. I don't know if you know this, you know the lead singer of Iron Maiden, you know, one of the best heavy metal bands ever. The guy's called Bruce Dickinson and he is an aircraft nut. He uh, is qualified to fly passenger jets and he did a great, um, he did a great TV series about the history of uh, passenger air travel. Uh, it's well worth watching. I think it's like heavy metal in the skies or something. Bruce Dickinson is one of these awesome people you know not only is he a lead singer he's a he's a fencer and he 
um, flies aircraft like a, you know, he, he flies big aircraft because he, he loves it. Uh, he'll, he'll quite often fly um, aircraft full of, of fans to, like, concerts and stuff. Yeah, the Bruce Dickinson, one of my heroes. Uh, their music's, you know, quite enjoyable, let's say. <laughs> Okay, so I think I'm now actually going down, but I'm not sure I'm going down fast enough. Here's the trick. I don't want to go down too fast because, as you see, this thing takes a really long time to come out of a dive. Bigger pro The big problem you I have with this is that it doesn't respond very quickly at all. I mean, the engines take a long time to spool up and down. So if I need, you know, power, if I need glide or whatever, if I need to raise my nose it's going to take at least 30 seconds before this thing starts to nose up, but at least we do get power under idle they're not producing smoke, but there's definitely power coming out of these things, and getting a little bit of a drift there it's really hard to tell, man I'm glad I'm not in that cockpit uh, and of course Ferrum Aerospace is um, doing its best to <laughs> Basically, I'm not slowing down particularly well. There are air brakes on this. I'm not going to use them because the air brakes are would be cheating. They, those would be from the hydraulics. There are thrust reversers, so the theory is that as soon as I touch down, I'm going to turn on the thrust reversers and hopefully slow down the aircraft that way. No guarantees. No guarantees that the crew will get out of this alive, but... Um, I'm going to do my best. Those B9 cockpits, they're tough. Hopefully, I just hopefully this will work. If not, I'll have to go back and have another go. Okay, trying to raise the nose just a bit now, because we are going down too fast. Going to have a little more... I'm not trying to... I just... I don't want to raise it too much. What I want to do, really, is... I want to flatten out my trajectory right at the end. So if I if I'm coming down too steep, I'm coming down at more than like 10 meters per second, and, and I can't really slow down. So since my vertical sink rate is going to be the constraining factor, I really need to get close to the ground and then somehow flatten out my trajectory. I, I don't know. I'm just totally guessing at how to do this. And that uh, you guys can try this too. I I totally expect somebody will do this better than me. There, look for the mod. It's the I think it's Davon or whatever is the developer. I could be totally wrong because I just found it in Kerbal Spaceport. You see me just tweaking the, the differential thrust to more or less keep the plane level. I have deployed the landing gear, perhaps optimistically. Uh, and this is it. We're really getting down here. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Okay, and I'm going to wait until the last minute. Or not the last minute, but the last... I'm going to have to thrall up just enough. I'm sinking too fast at this moment. But I do need to get down to the ground because if I don't get down to the ground, I'm going to overshoot and I'm going to run into those hills and that will probably be a disaster as well. At least I'm not going to run into the airship. Okay, ready, ready. Let's throttle up, throttle up, just notch, notch, notch. Up more, up more, up more. No, nope, we're not responding. Come on. No, it's too full, full, full. More, 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 more. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Darn, no. Oh, hey, they survived. Excellent. Oh, and the plane survived. Ha ha ha, look at that. Oh, that's great. It's just going to fly over, I don't know. But it'll probably come fly back and hit the cockpit. Oh, look, I still have deferential thrust control. Oh, wonder, wait, wait. Okay, let, let's spin this thing out of control. Bring it down safely somewhere. Oh no, wait, maybe I can fly it again. Hold on, hold on. Oh, that was a really bad move. Okay, I gotta somehow... Oh crap, how do I get it out of an inverted thing? Um... Oh, I... oh wait, yeah. This is, look at this, flying aerobatics in a headless spacecraft. Uh, aircraft. It's a good thing this is a cargo plane. Oh, come on, come on, pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out. Come on. Yes! <laughs> I totally did not expect that to happen. Okay, um, now I gotta somehow try to get this thing level again. I totally want to fly this again. I wonder if I can bring it around for another pass and land it separately. That would be kind of funny. Okay, I have no idea how to... I guess in theory the roll controls will still work, but... I, uh, I'm, I'm wondering just how well... They, I guess they're working pretty good. I'm using some really extreme roll commands here. Whoa, yeah, try to correct there. 
Balance it! No! Oh, wow, you're shimmying left to right there. I don't think shimmying is the correct word, but that's what it feels like. Okay, come on. Get this thing level. Get this thing level. Yes, look at that. Ah, look at that. Brilliant. Okay. This is the new super air-conditioned flight. <laughs> I have no idea how this thing is working, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I don't have any control inputs or anything, so basically... Um, there's no pod or anything on this. This is totally flying without any control input. So if you doubted me, if you thought I was somehow cheating, no, this thing has nothing on it that will give me any control authority, right? If you look, I mean, I, I bet you, let me see, look at this thing. I'm just trying to turn, let's try to find a place to go with this. They throttle down a little. I, I guess the mod developer needs to make it so that if there's no command pod that you shouldn't be able to do this. But uh, I'm quite happy to be able to do this for scientific reasons. Okay, there we go. There we go. And level out, level out, level it out. Beautiful. Oh, excellent. Oh, man. This is almost, this is, this is totally flying. I'm just getting it level again. I'll be able to take this off in a, a nice long flight there. It all just worked just fine. And there we go! Brilliant! And uh, I could probably try landing it over there as well if I was really feeling cocky. <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to do that in this video because we're running way longer than I expected. Look at that. So yeah, I mean, this is a it is a modified Stragatsky from the B9 pack with uh, Ferrum Aerospace. Uh, main thing that I had to do to modify it was adjust the center of mass, and I adjusted the tailplane so that it was deflected down just a little, and that meant that the stall, the the balance speed at which it would pitch up and down was much much lower. But we have still have electric charge and everything. There's the vehicle. Look at it. No nose on there. Who knows how this thing flies? It's just gonna be the ghost, the headless jet. There it is, look. We can see the fully air-conditioned cargo interior here. Brilliant, huh? Yeah, just spit the room with a view. And you can see right-clicking, incidentally, no controls. Just, I can't do anything here. That uh, simultaneously turned out better and worse than expected. Um, yeah, I did, I, it would have been nice to land it in one piece, but having that thing fly off and still fly was, was such a bonus. Anyway, yeah, I hope you uh, found that interesting. Check out the mod and, you know, do some reading on these uh, real-life air uh, disasters. It's really, there are some amazing stories and some tragic stories, but they're, you know, great stories to read and understand. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.